Hello, everyone. We're going to, this week, put an end to our unit on system of equations. If you could remember back about a month, uh, we were doing a unit on system of equations. Uh, we're going to wrap that up with the elimination method, which some of you might be familiar with. Uh, we did kind of allude to it a little bit the last two days uh, before uh, we were out of school. So we're going to go ahead and start with this. And just uh, kind of as a review, some of the things that we've talked about already, when it comes to the beginning of this unit, we talked about graphing systems of equations. And we said that it would make the most sense to do that when we had two equations and both equations looked like uh, our slope intercept form where we had y is equal to mx plus b. That was kind of the key to uh, the appearance of the system of equations where it would really make sense for us to be able to um, graph it. And when we graphed it, we knew that a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, if we were to graph our two lines where those two lines intersected, that point, which we know would have an x comma y value, that point would be the solution to our system of equations. Then we went on the substitution method, and we didn't spend as much time on substitution method, um, but a lot of the time with su substitution method, what we were looking for was one of the two variables, whether that be x or y, and just for the heck of it here, I'm going to make this equation um, x is equal to. So the key here is that that x, or could be the y, is isolated, and then the other part of the equation, or the other part of the system, would look something like this where we had the two variables on the same side. Uh, so the key there for substitution was that we know that if we had one variable isolated all by itself, it'd be really easy to take the information over here and drop it in for x, which was that letter that was isolated for in the first equation. What we're gonna do though for this week, and our focus on this week is going to be the elimination method, and what we'll see a lot, and um, we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible with how certain things appear, is that we know that we're going to have uh, our two equations are going to be in standard form, which we've alluded to before, but what that generally means is that we're going to see two equations, and both of those equations will have an x and a y, and they'll both be on the same exact side of the um, equation. So uh, I'm gonna take a look here at a couple examples first and foremost. Um, and what I'm really honing on here this week is that when we use the elimination method, what we're really looking for is two things. We wanna make sure that we have both variables on the same side, kinda like I just wrote out there. It looks like it's standard form. That's the official terminology for it. So both variables on the same side and what we really, really, really want to focus on here is that we're going to look for one of the two variables to have opposite coefficients. So I really need opposite coefficients. And it could happen for both equations. It could happen for both equations. Uh, but we're really probably going to see this week uh, that only happen for one of our equations. So we're going to take a look here at these four problems, and I'm not going to do all four of these problems, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just check out each of the equations or, and each of the systems and see where it would make sense for us to use this elimination method. Uh, and again, the key here is that I need opposite coefficients. You can see in all four of the problems right now, we have an X and a Y on the same side for each of the equations in each of the systems. I want to check out number one here, and I want you to take a look at the two variables, x and y. And of those two sets of uh, equations, which of the variables would it make sense for us to eventually eliminate? We're looking for opposite coefficients here, and hopefully you recognize that the numbers negative 4 and positive 4, they're opposite of each other. So we're going to really focus on that, and when we eventually do the math work, we're going to kind of start off with that in mind. The same thing happens in number two. It's a little bit flip-flop. The top one has positive four, 
and the bottom one has negative four. But I'm gonna be focusing on those X values to start off with, that's kind of where I'm gonna start the problem. Question number three, a little bit different. Uh, the top equation there, and you know, you can always do this, that if you need to write in ones for those coefficients, you're more than welcome to do that. Our X values here, not opposite coefficients. We have one X on the top, two X on the bottom. However, our y values are where our opposite coefficients are at. So we're gonna be focusing on that location eventually when we get to doing the problem. Finally, for question number four, we go back to our x values having opposite coefficients. That would be negative six and positive six. And I suppose I'll go up to the top and just fill these in. Here it was a little more confusing, it was negative one and positive one. So we're really, really wanting opposite coefficients here. Now I'm gonna do problem number one. Uh, and like we had mentioned before, I love the fact that I have opposite coefficients here for negative four X plus four X. Um, since I have those opposite coefficients, what I can go ahead and do is I'm just gonna add the two equations together. And if I do that, negative four plus four X, well, that would give us, 0x, but you know, 0 times x, that's, we're gonna, that's gonna be 0. We're not gonna end up using that in the long run. Uh, negative 2y plus 8y, that's 6y. And negative 12 plus negative 24, be careful there. 12 negatives, 24 negatives add up to be a total of 36 negatives. Now I have 6y is equal to negative 36. There's an equation I can solve because the variable x has disappeared because of us eliminating it. That's kind of where that terminology comes into. From here, hopefully we all have a pretty solid idea. We get y is equal to negative six. But we know that's not the end of the problem because as we mentioned before, about a month ago, and what we mentioned before in this video is that we need to have an x and a y value. We need a point as an answer to a system of equations. So now that I have this y is equal to negative six, I can take that, I can choose either equation, doesn't really matter which one I pick, plug it in or substitute it in and uh, solve for the variable x. So I'm gonna try to stay away from all these negatives on the top equation, I'll use the bottom equation. Let me write it down real quick. Always good to show your work here. Uh, and I know that y is equal to six, excuse me, it's negative six. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. I'm gonna go ahead and show all my math work to you here. Multiplication right there. Now I'm doing a two-step equation. Add 48 to both sides. 4x is equal to 24. Divide by four. You know, this is the algebra work we did at the beginning of the school year. And we get x is equal to six which is fantastic, but remember that when we write these out, we wanna write these out as a final answer of a point. So our point value here would be six comma negative six. That's our final answer. That's the solution to this system of equations, six comma negative six. Now, we had opposite coefficients there. It was extremely simple. Uh, we're gonna kick it, kick it up a notch, but we're gonna do the same exact thing as we did before. We know that the in order to have uh, the elimination method play here, we have both variables on the same side. Take a quick look here at five, six, seven, eight, you have that. Uh, and we need at least one variable that has opposite, keyword opposite coefficients here. Uh, and we're gonna take a quick look around here. If I take a look at number five, there's no opposite coefficients. Six, no opposite, seven, no opposite, and eight, no opposite, however, we should definitely, definitely see here that for each of these items, for each of these systems, you might have gone by and said, wait a minute, they're not opposite, they're actually the same. So if they're the same coefficient, they're not opposite coefficients, what can we do with that? Well, what we can do here, and what I would suggest on doing is we need to create opposite coefficients. I'm gonna pick one of the two equations and I'm going to multiply it by a negative one. Now that's up to you which one you wanna do. But again, I'm gonna pick one of the two equations of two, pick one of two, and I'm gonna multiply it by negative one. 
I know that kind of looks like a capital H over there, but you know that my abbreviation is multiply M-U-L-T. And again, that doesn't matter which one you might want to do um, with the multiplication of negative one, but what that does, and I'm just going to go ahead and pick the top one here. What that would do, it would change all the signs for this top equation here. And sure, I would have a positive 2x now and a positive 25, but I'm really focused on that positive 9y because now I have opposite coefficients. Over here for number 6, 8x plus y is equal to negative 16, negative 3x plus y is equal to negative 5. Those y's are the same. I'm going to pick one of the two equations, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 1 pick the bottom one here because I like getting rid of negatives. And I got to distribute to everything. Got to make sure we're aware of that. All of the terms here, that becomes a positive five. All of the terms here become uh, opposite of each other. Um, but again, here in this problem, I'm really focused on the y's because they're now opposite. That would become positive 6x which would now give us an opposite. And down here, we're taking a look at the y's, uh, just so I don't run into things. Let me go ahead and put it. And I would have these y's that are now opposite. So again, that's a possibility. We can do that. We're allowed to do that. The rules of multiplication is that as long as I multiply every single thing in the equation by negative one, I'm not changing the equation. I'm just using a scale factor of negative one there. So let me do a math problem here for you. It's the first one, it was number five from the previous set. And again, we come up here and we see, well, I don't have opposite coefficients, I have the same. So one of these coefficients I gotta change and just for the sake of room here, I'm gonna pick the bottom one. Negative four X becomes positive four X, negative nine Y becomes positive nine Y, and negative 23 now becomes positive 23. I like to cross off the equation that I use to multiply just so that it's not in the way. I'm, it's out of, out of my way. I can kind of now see a little bit more clear of the two equations. I don't want to think I have three there. And just like before, there are my opposite coefficients. I'm happy with that situation. I add the two equations together. Negative 2x plus 4x, well, that's positive 2x. Negative 9y plus 9y, that would make 0y, but we know the 0 is going to multiply to y and cancel it out make it zero. And then I have negative 25 is equal to, or excuse me, negative 25 plus 23, that would give me negative two. One step equation, divide both sides by the coefficient, and I get x is equal to negative one, which is fantastic, but we know we need a point here, not just one of the variables, we need both of them. Now I can go ahead and I can take that negative one and plug it into any of the equations, and by any I mean the first two we started off with, the one in red, um, you know, might be hard to have the second one that we started off with because we kind of cross it off and go back and look at things. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and use the red one. It's already positive across the board. I like to stay away from negative numbers, even though the number we're about to plug in is negative. We couldn't avoid that one at all. So I'm doing my math work here. You know how it is. We end up coming to a spot where we get to a two-step equation. And I got 9y is equal to 27. Divide both sides by 9. And I get y is equal to 3, which is fantastic. However, I know when we write the final answer out, I want to write it as a point. I'm going to put it up here in the top right-hand corner. It's going to be kind of small but you already know what it is, negative one comma three. That is our system of equation solution here, the system we started off with, negative one comma three. Now remember, that means that if we had to draw this picture as a graph, what that would mean is that the two lines would cross at the point negative one comma three. I got two more problems to go here, uh, and these are probably the more of the difficult ones that we're going to see, a little bit more thinking at the beginning of the problem. Very, very um, repetitive afterwards, but at the beginning of the problem here, um, we got to make sure that we're a little bit careful here. I only got two for this one, but I'm actually going to do 
and kind of talk about both ways here. We know both variables on the same side. We can see that's the case for 9 and 10. And we need at least one variable has opposite coefficients. So we don't have opposite coefficients here. And unfortunately, not only that, but we don't have the same either. We don't have same coefficients. Now what I want to do here is I want to check out the variables and I want to take a look and see is there any way that using multiplication I can manipulate one of the two equations to get to a spot where we would now then have opposite coefficients. And if I take a look at number nine, let me take a look at the x's here first. The x values are five and negative 10. I might have gone and just given away some of the answer here, but it's 5 and 10. If we use multiplication, it would be very, very simple to get opposite coefficients. I would take that number 5 and the rest of the equation. I'm kind of shorthanding this right now. I would have to multiply that whole equation by negative 2. If I did that, that would give me a coefficient of negative 10, and now I have opposite coefficients. If I was taking a look at the letter y's here, I have a coefficient on the top there. Technically, it's 1. And on the bottom, I have a negative 7. Again, not opposite, not the same. However, what I could do is if I take that 1 and I multiply it times 7, that would give me a positive 7. And I would now have opposite coefficients, and I would have to multiply 7 to every single thing in that equation. We go over to number 10. Very similar situation. I have a negative 4x and I have a 1x. And I'm doing this very shorthand, but I'll do the, one of the equations here afterwards. Um, negative 4 and 1, well, I could take that one equation. I can multiply everything in that equation by 4. That would give me a coefficient in front of that of 4. I now have opposite coefficients. Let me take a look at the y's. The y coefficients here are 9 and negative 3. I could, since these are, negative 3 is a factor, goes into 9, I should say. Um, so if I multiply negative 3 times 3, that would give me negative 9, 9, and now I have opposites. So again, mainly using multiplication here, and uh, I can manipulate one of the two equations in order to get opposite coefficients. From there, it would be the same exact thing. So I'm going to do problem number nine now, full out. Um, I have 5x plus y is equal to 9, 10x minus 7y is equal to negative 18. And again, I'm going to use multiplication because I don't have opposite coefficients and I don't have same coefficients. Let me go ahead and multiply one of these equations. And just for the heck of it here, let's go ahead and get rid of the x's. Now we could get rid of the y's, and if we wanted to get rid of the y's first, we'd have to multiply everything by seven. So I'm gonna get rid of the x's first. And if to do that, I need opposite coefficients, uh, and I need a negative 10. So five times negative two would give me negative 10 x. Multiply negative two to everything though. That's the only way we can do this is we gotta multiply it to every single thing in the problem. So 5x plus y is equal to 9 becomes negative 10x minus 2y is equal to negative 18. We go ahead and cross that off. And now I have opposite coefficients. That 10x and that negative 10x, well, that makes 0x, and that's going to get rid of that. Um, so we're not going to be worried about the x values here right now. Negative 7y plus a negative 2y, negative 9y. And uh, again, this one's kind of tricky to look at. Negative 18 plus negative 18, that's 18 negatives, and another 18 negatives, which would give me a total of 36 negatives. And as you can see from there, it's very much like the problems we've done previously. We get a y value equal to 4. We're not done yet, though, because we need to make sure we get both x and y values. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to take the second original equation. I could pick one of the three. Probably don't want to pick that first equation because I already went ahead and crossed it off. 
And I'm going to go ahead and substitute in what we had previously found for y. And oh, we've got a bunch of negatives here, but that's okay. Go ahead and add the 28, kind of jump the gun there. 10x is equal to negative 18 plus 28. It's going to be positive 10. And we get x is equal to 1. Again, we go ahead and we write our final answer as 1 comma 4. We actually solved that backwards, so be careful with writing that out like that. That original system right there, if we were to graph that on a line, or excuse me, if we would graph the two lines onto a graph, those lines would cross at the point 1 comma 4. So that's that does it for system of equations. Uh, we've talked about graphing before. We've talked about substitution method, and you just got a little bit on elimination method there. Uh, looking forward to the rest of the work that you need to do this week uh, on elimination method. You want to go ahead and check that out. And by all means, if you have questions throughout, email me or uh, come into one of the office hours.